Let me explain to you one of the biggest paradoxes in the raw vegan and natural health community. One of the biggest paradoxes in the raw vegan and natural health community. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Ronnie Smith from the UK Fruit Fest and obviously from YouTube. And I want to, on this channel, I talk about my raw food journey, my raw vegan journey, and information related to health, the raw vegan diet, changing your diet, changing your lifestyle, and things like that. But one of the biggest paradoxes I've noticed is that many people come into this lifestyle and they start to throw away all of the products and all of the chemicals and all of the sort of man-made substances that they've used. So people, they, they get into this and they go way over to the extreme. Like, they realise this is a natural diet. This is how we would have been... Uh, naturally or whatever more na more more aligned in nature and this is what animals do in a sense or this is kind of thinking of ourselves as an animal oh animals don't use toothpaste and use soap and use shower gel and use sun cream and all these things and take um, medications and all of those kind of things and we get sometimes we go right down that rabbit hole and take all that stuff out of our life or replace it with like natural alternatives or try and use fruit like some people might use fruit to clean themselves and there's not necessarily anything all that wrong with that you know if you want to get rid of some of these products it's maybe not such a bad idea in some ways but there is a reason that these products were developed you know it's not just it wasn't just to sell people a product there was there is reasons obviously and if you're out in this world with smoke and fumes and all the rest of it then that's obviously in your hair and your skin and we have an oil in the skin and therefore we use soap and the things in that that break that down and whatever and keep us clean and and so on and so forth so there's reasons for all these things and none of these substances you know people like to create these arguments these substances are going into your skin causing cancer or causing problems and they'll also do things like they'll isolate a particular molecule or a particular chemical and they'll say well that causes cancer or something but or it kills people or it's toxic and it's toxic in a massive dose but it's not toxic in the dose that's in soap toothpaste all of these products that are completely safe to use if you want to use them but the paradox comes in where they they get rid of all of those things, but then they'll do things like I'm about to sneeze. I think he was like, <coughs> "Sorry about that." So, <laughs> so back on track. Paradox. They'll do all those things, get all that out. That's all man-made, unnatural, synthetic, industrialized chemicals and all that, and toxic and all the rest of it. At the very same time, at the very same time, many of them will do things like drinking turpentine and taking certain other things, maybe superfoods, herbs, maybe a bunch of other things, in order to try and like get rid of parasites, kill parasites. So there's this big thing about parasites and cleansing and all this and the idea that I don't know why turpentines become the the thing uh, that some people have talked about but turpentine and then and, and then maybe other things that that are wor way worse chemicals for you to ingest and people are taking these things uh, with this kind of delusion that it's going to kill parasites and that that's what I don't get. And the other thing is like the urine drinking is kind of similar, where as you say, you're getting rid of all this toxins and all that, and then you're just taking in one, <laughs> you're just drinking in one, in a massive quantity. That's that's so fascinating to me that people can hold those two things at the same time. I'm gonna take out all these toxins, but this thing that is a known toxin, you know. Turpentine, which I'm pretty sure were suggested not to drink, 
they're taking that to try and get rid of parasites. This parasites thing is like a mental delusion, um, completely un, uh, completely false, completely unhelpful, um, ineffectual. You're not going to get rid of if you literally have like negative parasites in your body. If you've got problems with parasites, then turpentine isn't the answer. And these kind of and what a lot of people do is like really extreme cleansing, dry fasting and all that stuff. That's not the answer either, really. But the turpentine thing is just something I've seen recently. And someone said to me, well, you know, you've just not experimented with these things. I don't need to experiment with any of these things. I really don't need to experiment with any of these things. We've we The experiments have been done. Turpentine has not been found to be something that is effective for getting rid of parasites. Turpentine is not what the doctors will give you if you have parasites. Now, if you can tell me that that's wrong, then I'm happy to learn. I'm happy to learn, but I've never seen or heard or come across any information that when someone has parasites, they get told by the doctor to take turpentine. I've not seen that. Maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm open to learning. But I've not personally seen that information. So where is that information coming from? I don't really know. Unfortunately, a lot of this kind of information comes from people that want to sell products. That want to sell some kind of product or some kind of idea. Now the interesting thing is, why do people get caught up in these ideas? Why is there enough people getting caught up in these ideas to, for it to become like a little bit of a thing? And why aren't people so excited and interested about focusing on focusing on doing the best at their raw vegan diet? Why can't people focus on that? Why can't people focus on that more than focusing on all these little magical things? All this this is gonna get rid of my parasites. Parasites as if you've got parasites. Um, and people self-diagnosing themselves with parasites. Why are they excited by that idea? Why do they want to believe it? And that's the thing, it's, I want to believe that I've got parasites. I want to believe I can take this turpentine and get rid of my parasites. That's what it is. It's a desire to believe in magic. A, des a desire to believe in some idea that is for some reason deeply rooted in some kind of inherent part of our nature. Some deep-rooted fear of, essentially, parasites. Which, if you look at monkeys and things like that, there's a video on YouTube you can look at. It's Howler Monkey Bot Fly. I think it's called Howler Monkey. I'm not sure the exact name of the video. But probably all primates have suffered from various forms of parasite infestations. This is a bot fly, that, the, sorry, a Howler Monkey that has bot flies in its neck. And there's a doctor or a vet that's taking the bot flies out, but it's a it's a it's dead, right? Or I think it died a couple of days later. It's completely infested with like proper big bot flies. It's really not a very nice video to watch, but it's like something that I, I kinda like watching those videos. I quite like seeing the bot flies getting taken out. So parasites are a big problem for uh from from primates in the wild. And that's probably a deeply rooted part of our consciousness, of our, of our uh, being. And that's another reason why we check our food all the time. We open food up, we check it, we want to make sure there's nothing in it. When we hear reports of something being in our food, we get, we, people get frightened and scared and they stop going to that particular place. When people hear about food scares and uh, f food poisoning, and oh, there was a dead food in your dead food. You know, when people find a, a rat in their McDonald's or something, they found dead food in their dead animal and their dead animals. They, um, it's very shocking to people. It's very deeply visceral. You know, it's like a deep fear. And we're all we all have that because we're not we're not really the best omnivores. You know. And that deeply rooted thing gets attached to all sorts of other ideas that's how i believe it works that's the that's what gives it the energy that people will actually then go out and go beyond all rational thought 
all their rational thought and start doing things like drinking turpentine, doing dry fast, urine fasting, and all these things that they believe are somehow going to help them from this thing that they be the thing they believe in their head that there's parasites, that there's you know toxins inside them, that there's all this stuff. Um, you know we've got we we've got toxins. We're always producing toxins. We're always getting rid of toxins. We're always producing waste and getting rid of it. Uh, it's just part of the natural rhythm. We can't get to some point of complete cleanliness. Um, I mean, life is about life. It's not about. Um, it's not like about sterility. You know, we can't like we can't be like the inside of a fridge or something. It's not like you, you can't be like plastic and nothing's living there and there's no. We, we're a living being. We have things on us that other other beings can bacteria and whatever can eat and consume and our environment is good for other animals because we're an animal and good for other living things and the inside of our mouth is where things live and inside our nose and inside our digestive tract and everything else and it's important that we have these parasites you know some of them are, are important to us and some of them are damaging to us but we I'm just saying we as raw vegans people can get very delusional about these things so I would say to avoid those things and, and, and try and just focus on doing your best at eating a raw food diet focus on how's, what's the best you can do it and then when you've got to that point and you're doing it really well or as well as you want to do it then move on to looking at other things in your life that you want to improve it could be your job it could be your relationship it could be your sleep it could be you know various addictions you might have maybe gambling or you or you know you're addicted to youtube or something or facebook or um you're not getting enough social activity you're not getting enough exercise this is the journey of health it's all these other things the raw food diet is just a part of it but there's there's not some kind of way to speed it up if you want to detox and cleanse that that's that takes a long time, and you only get to, you only are able to do that long time on a raw food diet, hundred percent raw food diet, I believe, because a juice cleanse doesn't last very long, and a fast doesn't last very long, and a dry fast obviously doesn't last very long, and you can't take turpentine for life and think that's going to be healthy for you. So try and get on a raw food diet consistently, and simple and consistent raw food diet over life and over time you will see the differences and the changes in you and the healing and the symptoms coming up and then going away and uh, little pains appearing and then disappearing and all that stuff that is the body signs of the body healing itself but allow the body to do its job don't try and do it for you don't try and do it for it don't try and intervene and put something in because usually what you're just doing is taking away so allow the intelligence of the body to do its thing. Get rid of all the barriers that stop it from doing its, its thing. So I, I hope that message is clear in this video. Why be scared of all these chemicals and then consume other chemicals that are much more toxic? It doesn't make sense. So stick to the middle way, the raw food diet. Um, don't worry about soap and all these things. Don't, don't worry about these things. These things are not particularly bad for you at all. You shouldn't eat them, of course, but apply it to your skin. There's, there's not really any big issues with these things. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you're interested in, in a raw vegan event, look up fruitfest.co.uk, which is a fruit festival that will be happening next year in July. And if you're interested in coaching with me and learning about a raw vegan diet and how to stay on a raw vegan diet long term, I do have some coaching and you can sign up for more information by clicking the link below. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching this video. Subscribe, feel free to share it around, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.